What's up, y'all? It's Elle, and this is the fourth episode of the Elmatic View. Um, I was torn between two topics today, and the topic I originally wanted to speak about, which is extremely informative, I'm going to talk about October 15th. Um, I don't like to prematurely tell you guys my um, topics. I want to, I want an anticipation, and then I don't want nobody to steal my topic, so I'll wait. But um, due to recent events, I wanted to talk about Black Lives Matter. And I want to talk about Black Lives Mattering to Black Lives. And I think that that's something that um, the Black community has refrained from talking about. Um, and it's such a sensitive topic, and that's why I haven't spoke about it yet. Because I know that I'm a person where, if you guys see me pause sometimes, it's because I'm trying to make sure I'm saying the right thing. Because I know that sometimes whatever comes up comes out. And... I may not say the right thing at the right time and someone can totally take it and run with it and that's totally not what I'm trying to say. So, with that being said, try to read between the lines and try to see that, I don't want to say gray area because this topic is not gray. This topic is strictly black and white. So, I don't even want to see, I don't want to say, see the gray area, but I hope you guys understand what I'm trying to say. Since the beginning of time, the black man has been brainwashed to be against the black man. This has been spoke about since slavery. If you read the really the Willie Lynch letter, it's a very long extensive letter, but I encourage you on your free time to read that letter because what he's saying that he de that he wanted to do happened. It is still happening and it is like it's crazy. It's it's crazy how to turn the black woman against the black man. How to turn the light skinned Negro against the black Negro. How to it's it's deep, and it's it's unfortunate that we have not seen the bigger picture, even still to this day. Um, how they, you know, started housing projects to. Of course, this isn't in regards to Woody Lynch though. How housing projects were started about, and how it was to. Um, almost the survive the survival of the fittest when it came to that and people are killing each other off and it's still happening in our communities today and we cannot solely blame this on the white man i want us to take some sort of responsibility for ourselves and that is something that i don't see happening often um you know nothing can justify what's been going on Nothing can justify it. And, you know, we always hear history repeats itself, but I just never thought that history would repeat itself in this aspect. And I don't think that it's ever really stopped. It's just that social media has caused things to be such an, on a, such a broader spectrum of things. So it's, it's more out there, you know, television, Internet. We're able to see things a lot greater than we have in the past. So I don't think these things have ever stopped. And I just hope that they do. And when I was hearing people say, well, Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton don't have an answer for racism. There really isn't an answer for racism. Some people are just fucking ignorant. They just are. And some people are ignorant to the world, too. And as, like I said, the black community, I, I want to get off the white man. I want to get off of that. I want us as a black culture to take responsibility for how we are perceived and I'm not saying that it's okay that they perceive us that way. I'm saying that perception is reality. And I want to say that, um, how do I want to say that? This is live. So, you know, this is a little authentic. This is really organic. And I want you guys to know that sometimes I'm just talking off the brain. And um, when I go places, back in back areas, I live in a really rough neighborhood. I live on Joy Road and Evergreen. If you guys know where that's at, if you're not from Detroit, it ain't pretty over here. You know, it's a community where people pretty, you know, we have gangs against gangs over here, unfortunately. And sometimes when I go to the store, I'm tucking my chain in. I'm patting my purse. I'm a little nervous. And I want to make sure that I speak to the guy trying to talk to me because if I don't, he might try to rob me outside. He might try to slap me. How do you think white people look at us sometimes? And I'm not saying that's means of murder. Because it is not. You're not God. 
I don't know if white folks got this God syndrome. I don't know if you guys ever heard of that. Because they, they think they're so, you know, superior when they ask is just scared. Um, so if you want someone to treat you differently, sometimes you have to act differently and be different. Um, stop killing your brother over a dime bag of weed. So when you want to go out and boycott and protest some shit, protest Ray Ray killing Day Day over some Jordans. Protest that too. Don't be a hypocrite. Black lives need to matter to black lives too if you expect for black lives to matter to other people. And that's some shit y'all don't want to hear. And I'm going to tell you what you don't want to hear. And I'm not saying you got to agree with me. Please let understand this. I'm not here for you to agree with me. I'm here for you to understand and to spark an interest. I'm here for you to um, think about some shit. That's what I'm here for. I'm here for you to think about some things and say, wow, I didn't think about it that way. And like I said, nothing can justify someone killing our black brothers for no apparent reason, unarmed, who are willing. Because sometimes they're scared too. Because I think we do feel like we're inferior. Because that's how we our minds were set up and designed. I, my grandfather told my cousin that his white girlfriend couldn't ride, ride in a car with him to Mississippi. This is in 2012. He grew up in the backwoods of Mississippi. Where he feared being lynched his whole life. And although he feared the white man, he fought the white man's war because he had no other choice. So, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy. And I think that if, as a black community, if we were to be unified and to do more, that we could be so much better. And that's what they're afraid of. But we just don't see it. It's just something that's keeping us from being as one. And I don't know what it is. I can't tell you what it is. I mean, I, I think it's going back to the crabs and the barrel syndrome. I think it's back to being jealous of your brother and sister from seeing them doing better. I think it goes all back to that. And I think that all goes back to 500 years ago. You know, that, that date could be off. But you understand what I'm saying? But it's like, when is that going to change? It's like, when are we going to say, hey, we can't keep blaming stuff on that. You know, it's okay to congratulate. It's okay to... You know, want to see each other do better. We got to take responsibility as a culture and come together for all the right reasons, not just the convenient reasons. And I need these rappers to use their platform for a better reason. I need you to stop talking about popping mollies and lean and talk about what's going on right now, today. Because you're not exempt either. You could be Chuck Berry. You could be Ray Charles. These people had the same things going on happening to them back in the 60s. It can happen to you in 2016 because clearly it's happening and we never thought it was going to happen. Talk about it. Rap about it. Dave East talks about it on his new album and I, and I respect him for that because he's understanding what's relevant right now today. We have to start change within ourselves and then expect to see change in other places. And I don't think that, and that, that goes for me too. I can't expect for someone to think that I'm just this well-educated person or I'm just this nice girl when I'm still out here doing dumb shit in recent recent times. You know, I'm going to be perceived as, you're going to be perceived as a hood rat and, I, and that, that's not who you may be. Things happen, but you have to start a change somewhere and that has to start within your environment. You have to change some things around you. It's easier said than done. A lot of people fall victim to circumstances, fall victim to their environments, and it's it's really hard in the hood. It's real hard, and I and I tell you, I get it, I get it, but take responsibility, take some ownership, do something differently. Be, otherwise, 